There's an interesting thing that's happening in the world today. It's happened before. I'm sure that it will happen until Jesus returns again, but the bottom line is, though you may know the truth, and though you may speak the truth, that doesn't mean everyone wants to hear the truth. Sometimes, even when you know the facts, people would rather believe a lie than to admit the truth, because more often than not, truth becomes personal. They have to deal with the reality of something that's facing them that they choose not to be a part of. Dealing with the living God, we know that we have to face the truth. We have to come to the truth or come to the light, because you see, truth and light are synonymous in a lot of ways. When you are in truth, you can come to the light and let your deeds be known, whether they be of God or not. And Jesus said, men love darkness more than the light, because if they loved the light, then they would have come to Jesus when he came into the world, so that their deeds, their actions, their intentions, their concepts, their morals, their traditions, even their explanations and their theology would have been exposed, would have been revealed for what they really were. And whether they were based on fact, fallacy, interpretation, idealisms, humanisms, psychology, sociologies, or some other reason for what they were claiming to be as truth. You see, it's interesting because when Jesus was born, the wise men who came to visit Jesus at the time of his birth came to Herod and said, hey, where's he that was born, you know, king of the Jews? And Herod says, well, you know, I'll check with my wise men. So he asks his own scholars, his own doctors of theology, the people who knew the truth. And he said, where will the Messiah be born? Where will the king of the Jews be born? And they said, oh, that's simple. You know, and they looked at him and they told him. Because they knew. You see, it's interesting. They knew the truth, but they didn't honor it. They didn't want to believe in it. They didn't want to participate in the fact of the reality of Jesus not only coming again, but where he would be born, how he would be born, what they could have recognized about him, because they didn't want him. And when Jesus appeared later in his life, likewise, every time that he was fulfilling scripture, they kept rejecting the fact that they knew what he was doing. They knew what he was saying. The scribes and the Pharisees had no doubt as to exactly the points that Jesus was making, because he was identifying himself with what had already been prophesied in the prophets and the law. They had all pointed to one individual who would fulfill that coming again of the promise that God had given that man would walk with God and God would walk with man. But you see, at that point in time, they didn't want it. They didn't want to face the truth because it ended their power. It ended their little type of religious kingdoms that they had set up for themselves because they were in charge of their own little world. You and I have the same problem sometimes. We have to come to realization that truth is not convenient. Sometimes the truth will smack us in the face and we have to deal with the reality of are we as transparent as we think we are? We often say that about our government. We want the government to be transparent. Frankly, no, I don't. I don't want to know what they're doing because I know what they're doing and I don't want to know more. I prefer not to know because I do know. And since I do know, I don't want to know. And you see, that's part of the problem because the reality is, is that you can't hide anything. Jesus said that everything that was hidden and done in darkness would be shouted from the rooftops. It would be obvious because God could see everything. And that's part of the problem with truth. When you're dealing with the truth and the facts, that doesn't mean that everyone's going to want to accept what you're saying because it makes them have to deal with the reality of what now will I do with this truth I've been given? And that's what happened when people met Jesus. They had to deal with the fact that they had come into the contact with the living God. Now, what are you going to do? The priests, at the time that Jesus was brought before them, even knew at that moment in time that he was the Son of the living God, that he had claimed to be and that he had come to teach them. Because they said, better that one man should die than the whole kingdom. Because they knew what was going to happen. 
They were not wrong in what they knew would happen. They just didn't want to be a part of it. So they tried to manipulate truth. And in so doing, deceive themselves. Even to the point of later calling upon Bar Kochba in order to be the Messiah of Israel and winding up with the complete annihilation of the nation of Israel in 70 AD. We need to be careful, each and every one of us, when we deal with people, when we deal with ourselves, when we deal with pastors teaching us, when we deal with social media preventing us or we're participating in that kind of venue where we're inoculating ourselves to society by giving ourselves all this extra information that we really don't need. What are we doing with that information? Are we examining it to prove all things according to the scriptures that we've been given? Are we looking at it and re recognizing that thy word above all else is truth and everything else is not? Because when you look at the volume of the book, and you apply scripture against scripture, and you let it speak for itself, it is no problem knowing the truth. I know I have applied my life to its principles, to its teaching, to allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal in every circumstance or situation when I've had to confront a person or when a person has confronted me about the scriptures themselves. There's no doubt about what it says, especially about violence. There's no doubt about what it says about violence. About self-protection, there's no doubt about what it says about self-protection. There's no doubt about what Jesus said on the Sermon on the Mount. Did you know that? And yet we have pastors, teachers, and people in evangelical Christianity trying to tell you interpretations. Their personal perspective, their practical application. They're not telling you the truth because it's not convenient. It's something they want for themselves to believe in because they know deep down inside what the truth is. If Jesus said, they that take up the sword shall die by the sword, there's no doubt about what it's about. There's no doubt. You will die by the sword. No doubt about it. Did Jesus say to advocate violence? Of course not. No way. It's obvious in the scriptures. Even when it says, go out and buy a sword. Tells him why to buy a sword because he's going to wind up cutting off the ear of a guy and he's got to heal the guy and fulfill prophecy. So then they didn't need the swords anymore. Besides, two swords? That's enough for 12 disciples? <laughs> Somebody can't count. So you see, the stupidity of what's going on in society today is that there's an inconvenient truth and it's not about global warming or some association of what you don't like to hear. The question is, are you willing to come to the truth and be made aware of the facts of the reality of what the Bible is saying? Come unto me, Jesus said. All ye that are heavy laden, I will give you rest. The reason being is because you can trust in him, but you sure can't trust in man. I have recently seen, just in the political venue itself, when evangelical Christians tried to come up to me and tell me to vote for a Mormon. I don't know about you, but how could a Christian tell a Christian to vote for a non-Christian as part of a biblical foundation for politics? And that's the way it was presented. They never said vote Mormon. They said, no, vote the principles of the Mormon church. The principles? You mean the cult? You mean the false religion? You mean the false teaching? The false doctrine? Excuse me? This is what you come to in Christianity? You become a fool? That's what's happening. Professing themselves to be wise. In the last election, they became fools. And in that theology of that political venue of trying to adapt to sociological pressures, I see what has happened to the Christian and not standing on God's word and allowing the Bible to be our foundation. Because they took the word of God and adapted it to their society. Even as people today are trying to put America into prophecy, or trying to adapt Psalm 83 into some kind of war, or trying to make fit and finagle all these different scriptures together to kind of come up with something that they could believe in. Because they can't accept the truth. You see, when Jesus came into the world, he said, men love darkness more than they love the light. And I have a hard time right now really telling you this factually. But it doesn't matter whether you're a Calvary Chapel teaching the Bible or whether you're Billy Graham. There are parts of each and every one of us 
that for some reason will not come to the realization and the recognition of God convicting us of our sins and telling us, look, you're the one who won't come to the truth. You, me, we won't factually admit our own sin before God and be humbled and then repent and let God speak. Because as long as the majority of evangelical Christians own, possess, and promote guns, you're telling me you're reading this? You're not doing or living the truth. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the way. Jesus said, come to me and follow me. And there isn't one thing he said about taking up any kind of violent means because the violent man will be destroyed in the end. He is called the Prince of Peace for a reason because he brings peace, love, and joy. And when I hear my own evangelical born-again Christian brothers and sisters failing the test of no longer being Jesus freaks, Jesus people, those who are promoting peace, love, and joy, but now are taking up violent causes and taking the left hand and the right hand in order to hold the weapons of both hands instead of taking from the left and the right and being found in the center of God's Word. I don't know what kind of truth you're following. I don't know what you believe in anymore. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I really want to walk beside you when you're not willing to take up your cross but you're willing to take up a gun. When you're not willing to deny yourself, but you're willing to take up your rights. When you're not willing to follow Jesus, but you're willing to exercise your privileges under the Constitution and the law. I'm sorry. That's not who I am. I have watched the Son of Man, the Son of God, deny himself, take up his cross, and follow God's will to his own death and I would rather die than to live the Christianity I'm being told to live in America today.